Why do I have to be a zombie? Why can't I have a chainsaw? I'm supposed to be the big name. Big names aren't zombies. And you are the big name. Brian, baby, don't you see? This role is perfect for you. It fits your acting style. What? Being a zombie? No. You're not just a zombie. You're a zombie with feelings. Which feels up? You see, that's what your taste is. What's your name? It's Chloe. It's spelled C L O U G H E I E with two dots above the I. And it's pronounced Chloe. Yeah, I wanted a name with distinction, one that would stand out in the credits. That's where you get your exposure, you know? <laughs> that makes sense. So you're my leading lady. Yeah, but don't be getting no ideas. <laughs> ideas? <laughs> you know what I mean. Just look. When I went into this business, I promised my daddy I'd never make one of them kind of movies. So I only make these kind of movies. What? Zombie movies? It just ain't working out. No, I meant movies that are filmed outdoors. They only film those kind of movies indoors. But we are indoors. But we're pretending to be outside. Um, what's next? Who are you? Don't you remember? You hired me. I'm the director. Oh, yeah. Uh, you're, um... It's Vaughn. Gina Vaughn. It's my drag tell to you. Remember? And Daddy said this good? We can even meet people. Of course I remember. But let's not get the sequel before the quill. Ha <laughs> ha! Get it? Get what? Well, then, if it's your debut, let's get to a baby name. Okay, but I'd still like to know what's next. Um, how should I know what's next? Uh, Ryder, where's that Ryder? I'm right here. Explain it to her, Carl. It's Carol with an O. Carl, Carol, what's the difference? An O. What kind of name is Carol for a guy anyway? <laughs> My father named me baby after Carol Brown. You know, Archie Bunker? Your father was Archie Bunker? No, my father named me at the Archie Bunker. Then why did he just call you Archie? Look, Harvard, explain to what's your name. It's Vaughn. What's your name, Gina? Explain to Vaughn what's next. It's the love scene at the Blake Saves Time. Uh, who's Blake? You are. <laughs> who's Polly? You are. Uh, at the Brian Stays Boy from the other zombies, then they have the big love scene. Look, I'm a little fan of the love scene and all, but. I'm warning you. But I mean, I'm a zombie. Since when do zombies fall in love? Since now. Trust me, Brian, baby, you're gonna love it. The crowds are gonna love it, and the comics are gonna love it. It's a zombie apocalypse love story. You're gonna love the ending, isn't it, Carl? It's Carol. Whatever. Hey, are we gonna be here much longer? Are you chewing gum? No, I wouldn't I be. Because you're about to get eaten by a zombie. But you just said he was going to save me. But you don't know that. But you just told me. Hey, let me make this turn to I'm hungry. I've been We're on a tight schedule here, folks. We can't stop every time somebody has a little discomfort. I said all the story. My face is still itching. And I'm still hungry. Uh, never mind. Oh, all right. Let's take lunch. Be back in 30. I'll be in my trailer. You don't have a trailer, you have a tent. I know, but it says my contract is cold and trailer, so I'll be in my trailer. Wait a minute there. Yes? You do have that script ready for me, don't you? Why, yeah. Because if you mess this picture up, you'll never look this down again. We're on location. I doubt if anybody ever worked in this town. That's not what I meant. I meant Hollywood. I mean, the big town. Oh. I don't understand why we're in such a hurry anyway. Of course you don't understand. If you understood, you'd be the producer. We're in a tight schedule because we're not going to studio making a movie about 22, 22. When all them two come together at 22 seconds, on the 22nd minute, after the 22nd hour, on February 22nd, 2022, 22, 22, 22, 22, 22. When all them two come together, it'll burst the polarity of the earth. The dead will become living, and the living will become dead. The zombie apocalypse. I know. I made it up. Remember? I'm the one who wrote it. It doesn't matter who made it up. All that matters is who gets the movie out first. But don't you want a good movie? Good as objective, profit is objective. Remember, it doesn't matter how good the movie is, if it comes out second. We'll just be a remake. A Jimmy Come Lately. A sequel. We'll be nothing more than a cliche. And son, there ain't nothing worse than a cliche. But, but nothing. It's better to put out a bad movie first than a great movie second. Don't you see, Carl? It's Carol. Whatever. Even if we make a bad movie, we've got it made. You no, know, it's really hard to make a bad movie. Why, the worse movie is, the better chance of getting a couple followers. And then the next thing you know, somebody makes a Broadway musical, and then they make a movie version of the musical. And 
then we can sit back and draw royalties for the rest of our lives. <sighs> the American dream. To work once in the paper. What? I expect to see script on my desk by mom. Makeup! Welcome to the set. I'm Geraldine. Don't worry about the fair. I know this is only your first day, but you'll get used to her. Actually, Big Bob was script almost two years ago. This is the first time I uh, actually met anybody in person. I mean, you had to come all the way out here because we can't wait any longer for the end. Or so I've been told. That's the problem. I don't have an end because they keep changing it. Welcome to the business. So, how long have you been here? This is my second day. So, what is you doing around here? I'm in the union. Oh, so have you done this sort of thing before? Oh yeah, you'll get used to it. It's a bit hectic, but it's all about staying on schedule. So, how long do you think this shoot will last? If we stay on budget, two days. Wow. Two days, well, location is very long, is it? Location? Who's talking about location? I'm talking about the entire room. Two days? That's impossible. Don't tell that to Prefero. She's never produced a movie that went over schedule or over budget. She's the queen of the double Bs. Double B? What's a double B? Well, you know how there are A movies and B movies? Yeah. Well, you keep going until you have to double up. Oh. So you're the right one, right? Not lately. Have you trouble with the end of the movie? How would you know? Rumors. A movie set is nothing but rumors. But I learned the secret. Believe them all. I'm sorry, but what? Have you thought of a name for the movie yet? What? Uh, a name? That which it should be called? Oh. 2222. The Zombie Apocalypse. The Sunset Saga. Love Bites. Kind of a long name, don't you think? You do? I always like a short title. Apparent, that's why, apparently that's how people decide what movies they want to see these days. Well, it is a bit long. We already shortened it twice. That's shortened? Yeah. The first title was the entire first act. It was so hard just, with, just to come up with just the right title, you know? How about just 2222, the musical? But it's not a musical. Ah, but it could be. No, nope. it'd be just stupid. Oh, well yeah. Could it have that? Hey, you seem like a boy enough. I thought we could be friends. We hardly know each other. Well, yeah, we could do it that way, too. <coughs> My way's quicker. Listen, if you want, I'll come back and lunch. I thought this was lunch. No, this is only a break. Prefer I'll call all of our breaks lunch. So, what did you call lunch? Uh, lunch. What else would you call it? Um. Well, listen, I gotta go. Because if I ever stay in the same place too long, it's pretty obvious I got nothing to do. But yeah, I'll see you later. She's hot. And I was wondering, you know, you could <laughs> help me out. Hold the guy up. <laughs> Nobody kisses a zombie. <laughs> I was just, I was just looking over the script and you know we're supposed to uh, be in love, but we never make out. <laughs> Nobody kisses a zombie. But this is the future and all, you know. Thinking maybe we could. What's the future got to do with anything? <laughs> One really good makeup scene. No. <laughs> Why, dude? You gotta get all gnarly. See if I help you out.
I don't, now I'm in a high school stage at Union City. I don't even know what state I'm in anymore. I'm pretty sure she has a good reason. Like, no budget? Well, we can use the high school for free, and that's only if we wait until the girls' basketball practice is over. And that's only for the indoor shots. Where we're pretending to be outside. Because it's cheaper. Oh, I guess it all eventually makes sense. Yeah, and I'm sure whatever ending you come up with, it'll be great, especially if it's a love scene. Why do you say that? Oh, no reason. Same cars. Yes, but in tiny nuclear, nuclear reactors to get up the radiation. <laughs> How is that possible? It's the future. And we're going to have the same hairstyles and well, everything. Look, the original version had the whole earth type designers, and they that isolated products and resistance couldn't come down from the space station because their ray guns weren't working anymore. Why not? Because they won't. Now can they save all the people on Earth? Because they can. Why wouldn't the astronauts be zombies too? Because they were silly in titanium bunkers, but we couldn't afford that, so we had to, had to change the styrofoam. And we, they cut the special effect budget, so I had to write right, the entire space station out. Look, you really want to know about the original version was about? Badgers. It was about a happy badger named Buddy, with the help of a weird rabbit named Buster. But with help of Steve the Squirrel, they worked out all the problems, and all the animals got it together, singing on the arm how life is when the sun sets on another beautiful day. <laughs> that was funny. It wasn't supposed to be funny. But this is nothing like that. Except for the solid part, but I thought it was kind of stupid, even in the original version. OK, everybody, this is a big love scene. Blake. You're a zombie. Who? You. It's your character's name. OK, but why don't you just call me Brian? I mean, that's my real name. Because I'm trying to get you in character. OK. OK, you're a zombie. But something down deep is still you. Something down deep is still in love with Holly. Who? That's me. Oh. Um. And that one comes out, and you say? Brains. You don't just say brains, it's brains! Let this little emotion come out. And I say brains. But it's not just brains, it's brains! And I say brains. <laughs> Do I ever say anything other than brains? Hard to tell. Consider it a challenge. Who can act well with Chekka writing the script? Who's Chekka? He's that guy off the Star Trek. I didn't know he was a writer. Oh yeah, he's an artist. Okay, now let's make this a print. Places and action! Aren't I supposed to say that? Oh, Blake, it's me, Holly. It breaks my heart to see you this way, but I know it's still you. And I swore I would never stop loving you. I'm sorry, I mean, never mind. Back up the line, let's see it from there. After all, a promise is a promise. Was that an okay place to start? Cut! Yes, it was a great place to start. This time, stick to your lines, both of you. Bon appétit, I promise. 
talking to the creepy you out. You're a zombie. I know, but when a chick starts talking that way, your pets aren't safe. You don't have any pets. You're a zombie. You know, I've always wondered about that. Why aren't there zombie pets like zombie dogs and cats and cows and possums and kangaroos? <laughs> They're related, you know. What? Possums and kangaroos. Everybody knows that. Okay, everybody, let's get back to work. I want to film the fire scene while it's still daylight, you know? But aren't we feeling indoors? <laughs> um, excuse me, what fire scene? I've written a fire scene. Don't worry about it. You just haven't written it yet. We're filming it before you do. But I wasn't planning on writing a fire scene. What do you mean? How can you have a zombie movie without a fire scene? You know, it's where somebody gets a brilliant idea to set a zombie on fire. Like that one's happening. So this zombie, all in flames, goes around setting everything else on fire and always ends up with something blowing up. You know, that sounds really cool. That would work before the cafeteria scene. Or during, or after. See, I told you, you said Brittany yet. So, who are you setting on fire? Someone named Barbara. What? See, there she is. Nobody told us to be set on fire. What's the word? We'll go go up so you don't get burned. At least not too badly, and then we'll put you up in your head. What's the word? No. What? They do it all the time. But I don't. Come on. Won't hurt at all. Probably. No. Listen, it's in your contract. You have no choice. Yes, I do. I don't have a contract. What's our education system coming to when you can't get somebody on fire? <sighs> well, that's just Danny. Maybe you can blow somebody up. I'm pretty sure that's against the rules, too. Rules, schmools. Maybe you can put the left hand then. What do you think? You're asking me my opinion? <laughs> Not really. Oh, okay, everybody. If it's not too much trouble, let's take that where we left off with the love scene. Places! Okay, Blake, that's you. Blake has just called the other zombies, and now he's returning to Holly. That's you. Let's get some motion here, people, and action. Oh, Blake, it's me, Holly. Remember me? Brains. You do even do remember me. Ah, stop that. What did I do? You know what you did. You're not supposed to hug me. It's in the script. I'm supposed to hug you. Not what? that nuts. Well, how else would I do it? No one's going to believe that. Then how about this? Hi! She's, she's right. <clears throat> that is more believable. Writer! Yes? Did you see that? Yeah. I like it. Make her press the script. What? Did you hear that? She wants me to make the scene work. I don't even know how this script is supposed to be getting me. I'm pretty sure you can do it. Why do you say that? Well, I know we just met it all, and this might sound weird, but there's something about you that I like. You do? Yeah. I hope you don't mind. Mind? Um... Do you want to share a cucumber on your crust sandwich with beans, buns, or a dark brush and rye? When your mother is so packed, you'll actually take what she gives. I just had the most amazing experience of my entire life. Okay, but if you change your mind, I should, I'm sure I won't be in it. I think I just met the girl I love. Ooh, well that'd probably be better than half the sandwich. I'm being serious. Who is she? That girl. Um, thanks for clearing that up for me. That girl? The one she's producer assistant? Oh, I know her. What's her name? I don't know. And you're in love with her? Maybe. So have you guys gone out? No. Had long talks? No. Have you talked at all? You said hello. <laughs> I suppose that's a start. It was, I took one look at her and it was just like in the movies. Just to clarify, not this movie, right? 
one more busy. Right. Um, not too weird at the moment, but don't you think that's a bit weird? I mean, you are talking love here, right? Yeah, I suppose. Real definite there. I mean, is it me? Admittedly, I've never experienced love at first sight, but I find the whole idea just weird. If I were to fall in love with some dude, I'd at least want to know if he liked country music. The other stuff was alright, but if I gotta wake up to country music every morning, or wake up alone, I'm thinking being alone is a pretty good choice. It was in the eyes too. It looked like she was there. She knew it all. I can see her not listening to a word I'm saying. It was in her voice too. She knew it. I think I'll be going. Maybe I'll feed my sandwich to the squirrels. I hope that's not against the law. It probably should be. Want a sandwich? Nah. I really can't blame you. It's not that great of a sandwich. Look, you have to change the script. What? Why? It's that Greek I'm supposed to be in love with. You mean Brian? Yeah, sure, Brian. He's a Greek. Well, he is a zombie. It's not just the zombie part. He's a real creep. Well, what do you want me to do? Kill him! What? You know, write him out of the script. Oh. What? I can't write him out of the script. You need two people to make a love story. Fine, but if you have him kiss me, better have him orthodontist. Right on. It's an old oil from that lady, never seen the pictures. Wait a minute. We've got more problems than just that. Now I gotta know. Are you gonna bring me a finished script or not? Unless I know pretty darn soon we're gonna be running into trouble with the unions and have to have to start paying the late fees and all the body parts. Do you realize your intestines they charge my age? So, I gotta know. Are you gonna bring me a finished ending or not? I was just going to go move it right now. If you think you can keep pulling the sheep over my eyes, boy, you're mistaken. I know what I'm getting to walk around. Yes, yes, ma'am. If I don't have a finished script in my hands by tomorrow, you're out. Through. Finished. <laughs> Do you understand? <laughs> it's not that I don't like you, it's just business, and business comes first. Dude, where have you been? Right here. Well, you should have been where I was looking. It would have been a lot easier to find you. But I never looked. Which is really weird. Never mind. Look, we gotta get out of here. It's not safe. What's not safe? It's the Clive the Footsman effect. The what? You know why I don't believe any of this is real? It's because it's not. Well, wake up and smell the orange juice, buddy. This whole apocalypse is gonna be caused by all those suits coming together at the same time, right? No, not really. Well, it's made up, but when all those suits come together, it will shift the polarities. Positive will become negative, yin will become yang, and the dead will come to life. No. Yes, unless you're protected. You can't be protected by a star reform. Well, sure. There's some people on the internet who have done math. Where do you get in there with him? Brian's got his trailer. It's in his contract. Brian doesn't have a trailer. He has a tent. Don't let him hear you say that. That's in his contract, too. But yeah, dude, it's like all over the internet. What is? The kind of Woodsman effect. There are these two dudes, you see? They did some research back in the 70s on, like, old Nazi war presidents and stuff. What? I did the food to make it sound better. But they really did do these experiments. And they found that it's possible for thought waves to have a causal relationship with physical objects. What that means is that the more people think about something, the more likely it is to happen. It's like mass telekinesis. You're making no sense at all. Because I've been doing so much publicity on this movie, more and more people are starting to believe that something as silly as a zombie apocalypse, based solely on numbers, could actually happen. No. It's just crazy. I mean, according to this latest calculation, the apocalypse is scheduled to start tomorrow. Tomorrow? Well, it's tomorrow evening, give or take. I'm not sure if they figured out time zones and stuff like that, but yeah, tomorrow. Tomorrow? That's just crazy. Call it crazy if you want, but it is on the internet, which means it must be real. Uh, hey, we gotta go. Hey, you! Um, uh, me? Yes, you. Who are you? Nobody, really. Well, who cares? What is it you doing around here? I'm in the union. Seriously? Who's not? Look, we need spiders on our fire. You're it. I, I can't act. Who said anything about acting? Ma'am, the key trip just fell off the ladder. So? Um, she's hurt. Is it serious? She broke both legs and she thinks she's a catamaran.
That's awful. Is she in the way of anything? No. Good, good. What am I gonna do for a key grip? Never mind being sat on fire. You're now the key grip. Oh, thank Romero. Hey, what does a key grip do? They grip things, keys. Don't worry, you'll let us go. Hey, where are you going? Uh, to go find some keys. Oh, no, you don't. Just stay with me. Now look, I still want enough while you haven't given me the end of the movie yet. Well, ma'am, it's because the key changed the everything. I had a beautiful ending, but Brian saves Chloe from the other zombies, and then he falls them out to the death, and Chloe's escaped on a hang glider through, through the torch, I mean, through the Statue of Liberty. This, and we don't even have the Statue of Liberty in, and this town doesn't have a gray out of it. I'm not wanting to hear your excuses. I thought you were. Listen, I'm the kind of person who likes to get things done, and what I expect to get done is this movie. So no more talking. There are things to be used. Why aren't you also wear writing? Um, I'm trying to get inspiration. Well, how's this for inspiration? We're shooting the finale tomorrow afternoon. If you don't have the ending by then, you're fired. I know. You already told me. Okay, then fine. If you don't have the ending by then, then you'll never work in this town again. I know. Did I already use that threat too? Yes. Okay, then fine. You forced me to get serious. If you don't have the ending by tomorrow afternoon, then the only job you'll be able to get is writing scripts for reality TV shows. That's just me. You don't get to the top of this business by being Mr. Okay Guy. You! Let's go find some keys. Thanks a lot, buddy. What did I do? Well, that's just great. What? I took that the only one around her, around here, who wanted to be my friend. But what about me? Are you fair out? No. I am. No kidding? Whatever. Uh, yeah, some lady named Vaughn. The director? She's the director? No kidding. What do you? Well, yeah, she wanted to let you know that this doohickey that Squirt's blood is broken, and she might not be able to get it fixed. See? It's not squirting. <gasps> oh, I guess it is. <laughs> oh, I guess it's not. <laughs> what do you want me to do? I don't know. She just said to tell Hey. What? I just thought that maybe you like to... The lady named Bob. The director? Well, you don't say. I thought the other lady there was the director. Well, she says you have to come up with something other than chainsaws. What? How can you have an apocalypse without chainsaws? Well, we can only do the film again now. And the neighbors were raising the rockets about to know it, so we gotta come up with something else. Something more quiet. What? You can How can an apocalypse be quiet? Jeez, dude, chill. I'm only delivering the message. What? I just thought that maybe you'd like to talk is all. Does it look like I have time to talk? Uh, I'm sorry. Oh, no, you're not. This is like everybody wants me to fix everything. Well, I can't. Just let me fail in peace. Fine! Oh, Eric, I'm so sorry. Look, dude, I gotta know. You know what? Ask real friendly like for a favor, and I need to know if it's gonna come through. What favor? You know, the one about the chick. What's her name? Chloe? Look, all I'm saying is when I ask for a favor, I expect a favor. That doesn't make sense. You wanna know what all. else doesn't make sense? Yeah. I'll tell you, a love scene between the two of us. And if you do, I'll get really mad. And when I'm really mad, I'm really mad. That doesn't make sense either. Thanks a lot, buddy. Now what I gotta do? Do you have any idea how many keys there are in a movie set? I'll tell you. Ten. And now I've got hold of them. Every last one of them. And I blame you. What did I do? I'll tell you what you did. You made me stand around too long. That's what. I come and try and warn you about the apocalypse, which is tomorrow, by the way. I don't care what you say. And this is the thanks I get. There are names for guys like you in the zombie apocalypse, you know. It's called lunch. <laughs> oh, by the way, Colonel wants you ready to make out so you're Brian and Chloe. Good luck with that. Ryder!
you were married? I was, which was really stupid. Besides, you can't marry me friends if you're really angry. And besides that, besides, I really got a cool job. And every new case can be so fascinating. Well, I'm sorry. I think we just have to keep working. Hey man, you have my eyes. You know, it's a lot easier to actually work than to try and avoid it. Look, about me eat my zombies. Hey, it's a good one. No, I mean, the zombies are really coming. The latest prediction is for right after lunch, our time. Who does this guy collection? Somebody named b -Dog. He's got the log. Who's got the keys to the camera? Coming! The camera's have keys. I'm telling you, there's a lot to learn. Well? Well, what? Well, are you going to stand there all day? Are you going to get up the stage and let us know this picture? And action! If you're alive and I'm dead, would you really eat my head? Please don't think of me too unkind if I love you for your mind. I'd wear white late in the fall and miss important telephone calls. I'd be in a dead walking corpse. And I'd suffer a bad Charlie horse. And shack a blast to the head, stumble around into my bed. I'd miss a one day only sailor, have a broken fingernail. I'd take a chainsaw through the guts. Or half a dozen paper nuts. I'd cover in stinky molds. Aaron? Bob wanted me to tell you to protect it and clear, so we 
can't do the lawnmower scene. She wants me to play it accordingly. Aaron, um, um, I'm so sorry about yesterday. I didn't mean what I said. I know you're really not that way. Do you forgive me?
hanging around the high school cafeteria. Look, everybody, this is it. We're gonna do the final love scene. This is where Brian will find out his clothes. No way it is not in my contract. It's in the script. It's in the script. You gotta do it. No way it ain't. It's in the script. That doesn't mean anything. I'm not kissing that. Hat. Hat. <laughs> Who are you calling a hat? You heard me. I called you a hat. You couldn't act your way out of a laundry basket. Like you would know a laundry basket. Like you would know good actor. <laughs> you wouldn't know good. You would. Oh my god. You wouldn't know you wouldn't know good acting if it moved in next door. Huh. Well you wouldn't know good acting if it lived in your basement. You wouldn't know good acting if <laughs> oh. if it slept our butt. Like you would know good acting! Why are you gonna tell me how to act? The gore for the best display of the Tudor's violence by supporting actor is support the best supporting actress, a sequel that was made in the same year, the same movie, that's budget was less than a hundred thousand dollars. <laughs> wow. Bad time, bad that comes is with thieves. You got a gore? I beat out Ted Underwood in triple amputation. Sorority House Slaughter 5, Return of the Hatchet. You were in Sorority House Slaughter 5? Who did you bring? Remember the scene where the homeowner goes out to the garage and the person in the deep freeze? That was me. That was you? Oh my god, I've seen so many people jump out of freezers before, but when you did it, it was so real. The trick is to cover yourself in water and spend about an hour in a real freeze. <laughs> Nothing beats realism. I was going to come back at 8, then 6. Pretty much now. That's a shame. That's a wrap. How can that be a wrap? Do you think we're gonna get any closer? You got it. Okay, everybody, let's take lunch. And after lunch, we fill the ending. We do have an ending, don't we? It's happening! My life is over. Not if you stick with me. What are you talking about? It's the apocalypse. It's happening right now. Come on, can you set that real promise here? Getting your brain eaten by a zombie is about as real as it gets. Quick, put this on. No. Put it on. No. I said put it on. What do you think you're doing? I'm saving you from the zombies. What zombies? No zombies. Those are just extras. They aren't. Carol, what's going on? It's the apocalypse.
are such a nice compliment. Oh, thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, we have us a hit movie. How do you know? Because I did. You wrote the ending? Well, you weren't going to. But. And if you did, we couldn't very well have a sequel, now could we? You know, contrary to popular belief, movies are not steady work. And besides, where else is a key grip gonna grip keys? But. So I just wrote us into the plot, made your character clueless, and let you play out your part. But what about all that stuff about the realism and the popular I made it up. All of it? Yep, all of it. Okay. What about all this stuff about what's with my friend? Did you make that up too? Well, yeah, but what's wrong with a contrived friendship? It's still a friendship, right? No, that's awful. Would you rather have no friends at all? And listen, I really do like you. You're a good guy. You know why I wanted to share my sandwich? That was for real. Except my mother didn't make it, and it was actually to the fish. But hey, you might as well be friends since we have to work together. We're not working together. We're done. Well, on this one, yeah, but then there's the sequel. The sequel? How can you have a sequel to the apocalypse? <laughs> it's me. I'm sure you'll figure it out. Me? Why me? Who else? After all, you're a writer. Tim, is Erin, is she part of the plot too? Well, I did have to tell him to kick. No, I mean, is her like me for real? That? Beats me. I don't really know what her angle is. Oh, hey, there she is. You can ask her yourself. Besides, I gotta go. I got things to unlock. Hey, hey, stick around. I got a couple of sandwiches. Erin? Carol? Erin? Oh. 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 I've been trying to say you something. Yes? Erin, I'm falling in love with you. I have. I love you. And I know that you love me too. It's in your eyes, it's in your voice. That's fantastic! You don't think I overdid it, do you? Uh-huh. Well, I mean, I was afraid of hitting, coming off too cliche. You know, the girl falls in love with the guy for absolutely no reason whatsoever. But I really didn't have a reason. I thought that made it more of a challenge. What do you think? What did I think? I thought you were in love with me. Oh, heavens no. I mean, it's not that you're not a nice guy and everything. It's just that if you would have been a creep, it would have been really hard to be so convincing. Convince me? Who are you trying to convince? Nobody, really. See, I was practicing. Practicing? Practicing for what? The sequel. The sequel? Do you really think there would be a sequel? This movie is a disaster. It's awful. Which is the more reason there will be a sequel? See, they got nothing to lose. That's how the formula works. And they're going to have to have a strong female lead, and that's going to be me. If you think I'm going to be content following some silly guy for the rest of my days, brother, you got another thing coming. But I thought you were in love with me. Ooh, you want to work on anger next? I've always been good with anger, but it doesn't hurt to practice. No. Yes. That was an awful thing you did. Oh, come on. You can't seriously think I was that stupid. Did you really want a girl that was that easy? If anyone should be mad, it should be me. Would you really think I was that stupid? I, um, I'm sorry. See, I've never had a problem with anger, but thanks for letting me practice. You were using me. Yeah, I hope you didn't mind. Of course I mind. You and Geraldine played me like a sack. Geraldine, I'm not sure what she was doing, but it did kind of work out. And besides, we weren't really playing you for a sack. Then, what if? You? An opportunity. An opportunity? Yeah, wasn't that what you were looking for when you took this gig? But I fell in love with you. I'm still in love with you. Don't lose hope. The way I see it, they're gonna need someone to write the sequel. And that's gonna be you. And Geraldine. So? And don't lose hope. They're gonna have to have a strong female lead and hang around long enough and I mix that pretending.